there have been times that I have not fought fair. Now, what does that look like? Because when we're talking about fighting, inevitably, when you get two sinners in relationship with each other, maybe it's at work, maybe it's at home, maybe it's within your family, maybe it is within marriage. When you get two sinners in relationship with each other, there's eventually going to be conflict. There's going to be headbutting. There's going to be frustration there. So fights are going to happen. So the thing we got to learn is how to fight fair, and we got to really figure out what that looks like to fight fair. I can think of times within my marriage, to use that as an example, when something was going on and something bothered me, uh, and I didn't say anything, I didn't act on it, I didn't try to solve the problem, I didn't bring it into the light, I just left it kind of deep in my heart, and it just kind of simmered there, it's just, just kind of underlying frustration. And then something else happened that bothered me. And I did the same thing. I didn't address it. I didn't talk about it. I just let it sit in my heart. And it really just kind of simmered and didn't really do much. But then eventually what will happen is one little bitty thing will happen. So maybe, I don't know, I felt like Colleen did something that was just kind of silly. Like she didn't clean up a plate or something like that. And I was like, I've got to clean up the plate. But then what inevitably happens is... At that moment, that's like the straw that breaks the camel back, camel's back, and all of the frustration comes out. So everything that was bothering me about our relationship, all of the things that had been simmering underneath the surface, that plate that was left out after dinner, is like the catalyst that just causes all of the words to come out and all of the frustration to come out. And I'm just basically vomiting it all out uh, on everybody. And what happened there is I didn't fight fair. And so it's like I'm sitting there and I'm like, and another thing. And then here's another thing. And if she's doing the same thing, which might happen, might not, uh, then she's bringing up all these other things that she hasn't addressed. And we're just fighting about 50 different things. We're not coming to any sort of conflict resolution. We're not in a state of mind where we're going to get any sort of clarity. We're just mad. We're just fighting. We're just talking in circles. Everybody's frustrated. Tempers are flaring. And that is a picture of what it looks like to not fight fair. That's what it looks like to not fight fair. And that's how most of us do it. We let things simmer. We don't talk about it. We don't address it. We're not proactive. And eventually something happens where all of the things that we didn't address come out at once and we just vomit it all over the person that we're fighting with. That's not healthy. That's not fighting fair. We're not getting anywhere in our marriages and in our relationships when we do that because we just get mad at each other. We just yell. We don't solve anything. So here's the question. What does it look like to fight fair? Like if, you, if you're married and you're watching this, what does it look like to fight fair with your spouse? If you've got close friends, which most of you probably do, what does it look like to fight fair? I think there's three words that are helpful. Keep short accounts. Keep short accounts. What does that mean? Well, let me use some scripture to explain it. Jesus is talking in Matthew chapter 5 on the Sermon on the Mount. And Jesus says this in verse 23. He says, So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. So what did Jesus just say here? Now, this is within a much bigger context of a passage that he's teaching, but ultimately he just said, if you're in the middle of something, if you're in the middle of offering your gift at the altar, and there is frustration and anger welling up in your heart towards your brother, go to him or her and solve the problem. Have the conversation. Let it out. In other words, keep short accounts. Don't don't hold this in any longer. Address it before it blows up and you don't end up fighting fair. And see, I think personally this is incredibly helpful. It's not easy. Because so often if somebody slights us or somebody does something we don't like or there's something we need to address, we recognize that, we see that, uh, but it's easier just not to address it. Because if we address it, conflict will ensue, we feel like. We don't realize that the conflict that ensues because we don't address it is way worse than the conflict that ensues if we address it in the moment or we address it when it's still fresh, when everybody's settled down and we can actually have a good conversation about it. So here's what I want us to walk away from from this. First, I just want to ask you, I don't know what your relationships look like. Um, 
maybe within your marriage or your friendship or just within your families. Do you have anybody that you're frustrated with? Is there any kind of unsettled animosity or anger towards somebody that you have uh, that's just kind of simmering in your heart? And here's a really good way to tell if you're doing this. Are you having fake conversations with them in your head in which you always win the argument? So if you're doing that, that's probably the person you need to go talk to. I would find a time where y'all both are in a kind of a settled mood where there's no other additional stresses and just lovingly lay out what it is in your heart that's bothering you. In the same way that Jesus says, go to that person before you, you give your gift at the altar. And I think by doing this, maybe it's your spouse, maybe it's your friend, but just by having these conversations, I truly believe that what will happen is that you will see conflict resolution begin to take place. You will see a lot less of the you know, frustrated anger, we're yelling at each other all the time, and what will eventually happen is you'll begin to solve some of the problems and the frustrations that are taking place within your marriage and within your relationships. Because ultimately, that's how Jesus approaches us. So if we look at it as Christians, um, it, that's how Jesus approaches us. He comes to us and loves us and pursues us in the midst of our frustrations. He doesn't wait until 75 of them pile up. He comes to us at the appropriate time to convict us of what's wrong and to show us what we need to see. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you have a great Friday. I hope you have a great, great weekend. I'll see you guys soon.